what did that look like? Were you yeah. set financially uh, to? I left, I, left, I left hockey with zero dollars in my bank account. Holy oh, <laughs> shit. Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to The Booth. My name is CJ, and with me today, we've got Justin Boffshever. What is up, everybody? Pleasure on, to be here, yes, as always. I'll clap for you. Thank and you. Uh, unfortunately, Matt has work, so he is not here with us today. But unlike our usual podcast, where we like to talk about what's going on in our lives, uh, today, we have a very special guest that we want to bring right on and get every minute out of him. So uh, let's introduce him. Not only is he a former pro hockey player who turned content creator, he's a multifaceted entrepreneur who founded entities such as Honey House, Reset, and Triple Deke. He also makes videos about social strategy, business, and culture. Here today inside the booth virtually to bless us with some wisdom, we've got JT Barnett. <laughs> What's what going up? on, man? man? Thank you guys for having me. Bro, thank Bro, you for coming on. So we've listened to a lot of podcasts that you've been on and we've noticed that you like that you've d dive deep into hockey. We ourselves were actually hockey players and you know, from Florida, we can relate to you being from Scotts or, you know, raised in Scottsdale and coming from hockey in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to dive too deep into like all about hockey, but we definitely want to talk about how that affected your upbringing and like more of the mentality side. Yeah, definitely. Cool. But I'm down. Let's do it. I don't even know where to like exactly start like junior hockey like moving away like what time you moved away from home at what 15 and how did that like moving away we can relate because we both moved away from home, home at 15 also and like how did that like do mentally for yourself like how, how did that affect you yeah yeah i mean it was like i would say majority of my hockey career was like a mix of <clears throat> good and bad and not good and bad and bad i hate you I, I really don't like using those words but like a mix of like positive and also not as amazing in the sense of like moving away from home was amazing because i was getting to chase my passion and my career and my dream yeah being in the nhl and at the same time the downside of that was having to leave all my friends and family and home and like all that stuff which is stuff that i probably never uh probably never recognized when I was playing like you just when you're chasing a dream you don't you, you tend not to see a lot of that other side stuff um so I would say like the m mentality for me uh was a mix of really missing my friends and family uh and missing my like home home life uh and also really enjoying the striving to be an NHL hockey player and be like the best that I can be on the ice yeah definitely I think that's a good uh way to like sum that up and also notice how like you've touched on you you were always inclined with like in tune with like your your other attributes like being like artistic and kind of into music and things like that like how did you find because how did you find that balance within like your sport and your, like your your side crafts and kind of not teeter too so, too far on one side to be able to like have a pro career but still kind of start putting out content and like still like really pursue these cool other things that a lot of hockey players or athletes don't get to do. Yeah, I think um, I didn't look at it as like needing to balance it. Like I just was kind of doing the stuff that I really enjoyed. Um, I think at a certain point, like hockey and the lifestyle of junior hockey wasn't uh, fully what I wanted. It mm -hmm, wasn't definitely. as enjoyable as like, like I wanted to do more creative stuff. I wanted to do more music i wanted to do more social media and like that wasn't something that was uh necessarily like encouraged yep. in in like the hockey community yep. so i feel like for me it was just like it was really just me like doing what i want and just being like hey i'm interested in this stuff and it and i really did feel like the music and the creative work and social media and all the creative stuff that i was doing was adding to my game as a player because it was making me happier which everybody plays better when they feel better yeah 100 so, percent. like for me i was like i know why this i'm doing this like i know that this makes me feel good i know that like i love connecting with people i know that like music like i was doing a lot of music production like i know that making music is like is a very big release for me with like when i leave the rink and like go and like any stuff that's going on in the rink like music is a great like a side escape for me yeah um so I had reasons, I had my reasons for it. Like it was like something that I really felt was beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. And along that journey, did you ever, the creative side, did it ever want to take like 
the full side of you? Like, did you ever be like, you know what, maybe I don't want to do this? Cause you did play for a pretty good amount of time. And like we talked about, you played professional yeah. hockey. So like, was there ever a moment where you're like, you know what, during the journey where I was like, you know what, I, I kind of want to do this, but like hockey maybe felt more safer cause I've been doing it for longer. You ever have any of those kind of thoughts? Yeah. So I, um, I definitely towards the end of my career, like, bro, I went from playing in, I went from playing four years in the ECHL to somehow playing and making the KHL and playing games in the KHL to going back to the U S not getting signed by anybody in the AHL, not signing an ECHL contract because I was holding out, hoping that an AHL one would come to literally not to going to an ECHL camp and not making the team because they had too many players already signed. Jeez, so I literally went crazy. from the KHL to, to being like, Oh, do you want to go play in the SPHL? <laughs> And, uh, um, that, that like constant rejection was like easily for me was like, dude, I'm good at so many other things that yeah. I really, really enjoy like this creative stuff. And, um, I think like, I think there was definitely moments through my junior career of me being like, fuck, like I really, I could, re especially going to a place like Coachella or like going to concerts and being like, dude, I could easily see myself being a performer and being a DJ yeah. and like that lifestyle like i could easily do that yeah um but i had a i had a really deep passion for hockey i think the i think once once it started to get more clear for me that i wasn't going to make the nhl like two three years four years in the echl you're like every year you're like all right this is like farther of a chance like less, mm -hmm. less people make it from here like i'm not even getting opportunities and stuff so once that started to kind of like resonate with me that i wasn't going to be cracking the nhl that was when it started to be like, all right, what else is out there? Yeah. I started going harder into music. I went to acting school for a summer. Oh, really? I wow. Went to, yeah. I was doing a lot of like, I was taking like photo and video and I was doing like, con like different types of content. Um, I was just like trying different stuff. And, and I, and I started to notice that I was good at it. So I started to notice like, oh, I'm actually really good at music production. I'm actually really good at video production. I'm actually really good at content. And so once that started to connect, I think like slowly over time, it was like, all right, I'm going to kind of like let go of hockey and like yeah. move harder into being a creative. And that was around 25, correct? That was, you were around 25 years old when you dropped, when you stopped playing yeah, hockey? Yeah, I mean, I retired at, I retired at um, 25. Yeah, I retired at 25. So I would say like probably 22 was what, like my second, yeah, after getting done with my second year in the ECHL, I played in Ontario. I'd played in Orlando for a tiny bit. And then I played in Stockton for a year. Mm -hmm. And after that year in Stockton, I was kind of like, like I'm living in like ECHL is so far from glamorous. Like I'm not making any money. I'm not even like a star on this team. Like I'm not even like getting, I like, feel getting what I feel like yeah. is respect, like not necessarily respect, getting uh, the attention that I wish that I could get yep. uh, on this team and like in this league. And like, it, it just was like a, this isn't super enjoyable for me. And so I was like, I don't, I don't want to stop doing it because I still love the sport and I love the guys. And I love like the process of trying to be, go out and play and be the best and like all of that. But, uh, and I didn't have anything to like jump into right away. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, Oh, I have a college degree and I could go work on wall street and make a hundred thousand dollars this year. And like, that's my back up plan. It was like, if I quit this, I have no backup plan. I'm just going to be going and working a job that like, you know, a sales job or something like that. So for me, it was like, I'll keep riding this out, keep like having fun with it. And like, I'm just going to start doing more creative shit on the side and seeing how that feels Yeah, and like slowly trying to transition it. So going, speaking to that transition and like that journey is amazing and an athlete myself, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate through that. And it's just like, in a sense, like, I don't want to say it's like good to hear someone else going through it, but it, it's nice to know, like, you're not alone, like going yeah. through all those like hard times. Um, let it be like you're playing pro or playing juniors, local juniors yeah. or just local high school. Like everyone's battling through adversities, sure. but going through like your transition and not to like label people, but like, I feel like at least personally prior to me retiring or like stop playing. If someone asked like, who are you, Justin? I'd be like, Oh, I'm a hockey player. Like that, that was my identity in a sense. And not that I'm happy about that, but like, how did you transition from like being like JT, the hockey player to like, JT, the, the creative. entrepreneur, yeah, cre yeah. creative. You know, honestly, like, 
I actually really feel like one of the things that has been harder for me is not identifying with myself being a hockey player. Like I feel okay. like from the moment I went to juniors at 16 and saw players on the Vancouver Giants and then on Kamloops and like just players that I was around, I was so different than them. I was so California and yeah. still and creative <laughs> and art and like, like not a traditional boring. hockey. Like I was, yeah, I was so different that I actually feel like my struggle with it was not, oh, I'm no longer a hockey player and that was my identity. I actually feel like my struggle while I was playing was, oh, I actually don't feel like I am a hockey player. Oh, wow. And I'm around oh, all these guys that are hockey players, but I actually feel like I am more. Like, I feel like I'm just fucking different than just like the typical like hockey player. Yeah. Um. So, so, so being done with the sports um i never went through the identity shift of being like oh fuck i'm no longer a hockey player i actually think the hard part for me was a different challenge which was oh now i am full-time creative and now i have to like really bet on myself and like trust myself that this is who i believed i was mm -hmm. and this is like the part of me that i knew was there rather than like Oh fuck! I'm no longer a hockey player, and that's all that I've known. And like now, what do I do? Yeah, definitely. How did you like to follow up on that? Like, how did you find that confidence in yourself? And yeah. it, oddly enough, it was I do like this stoic journal every day, and that was actually like my question today was like to myself, like how do you how do you how do you find confidence in yourself? So like in that scenario, how did you like pick up pick yourself up and say like this is what I got to do now? Yeah, I think uh, the creative stuff, like I think I was getting external validation that I was good at it. Like the music stuff, I was making music and showing it to people and they were not knowing that it was like, uh, that it was me that was making it. They were like, this is dope, yeah. who is this? And I, yeah. I made this. That's gotta be a great feeling. So that, and then, um, and then like with social media, like I was having, uh, I was having success with like posting stuff and getting people to care about things. what does that look and like, like what, what what do you mean by snapchat. success like when i was in russia and i was doing snapchat like i built us a, a bit of a snapchat following just like documenting my days and like was just getting a lot of a lot of uh validation from people outside that they were enjoying it mm -hmm. and so i was like oh people really enjoy the like day in the life of like what i'm doing definitely, definitely. Um, that and then like my instagram content people sending me messages like love what you're posting so the those kind of things were like little breadcrumbs that made me be like, oh, this is something that I'm, that, that people are liking mm -hmm. and I'm getting respect or getting like validation from, um, that's just like showing me that this is something that I might be good at. And I think from there, when I retired and was like, I'm going to go really hard into posting workouts and stick handling and that kind of stuff. And when those workouts and training clips started to like get traction, yeah. like build me a build my Instagram following and get views, that was when it was like, okay, cool. Like I'm at, this is like something I'm good at. Like this yeah. is something that I understand. I know the platform. I know how to do this. And so it was, I guess to answer the question was just like a lot of me trying shit and then figuring out ways to make things work. And then once they started to work for me, then I was like, okay, I'm going to go harder at this. Yeah. That's awesome. I honestly think that's the key to finding any, like your passion, like yeah. I, trying a million different things. And then like, are you, were you always this optimistic? Like when, yeah, like sure. you have, like from what I've heard so far during that journey, you always sounded pretty optimistic about your abilities. And like, was that a trait that you always had? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm, I definitely feel like I'm naturally really optimistic. I feel like during the uh, during the ending parts of my hockey career, like the like the third, fourth year in the ECHL and then yeah. Russia, and then my last year, I was more angry. Mm -hmm. I was more like, "This fucking shit sucks!" Like, what the fuck is this league? Yeah. Like that. I, so I had more yeah. of like that, like anger. Weren't you living in a like hotel still? room? Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but weren't you living like? No, no, no. Go ahead. I was gonna say, weren't you living like not very well there as well? Like, weren't you guys put up in like, I heard you say like a hotel room or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Russia was, so yeah, Russia in itself, which we can definitely dive into, was like a, a, such a great experience, but also was just like really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like, I, I do feel like I've, I do feel like I'm super naturally optimistic uh, and positive. I feel like circumstances have in the past made me uh, feel other ways. Um, 
but I do feel like even in the ECHL, even in Russia, even in France, when shit was going on for me, I still knew like, oh no, like this is temporary. Like this shit is temporary. Yeah. This is not, this is not the shit that I'm going to be um, dealing with forever. Or this is not the situation I'm going to be in forever. Or this is not, this is like something that is like temporary and mm-hmm. like, I'm going to get through it. And like, the optimism was always there. I can relate For, so heavy, yeah. especially right now, because we were just talking about before. I own a landscaping business, and I hate it. Like, <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm it's, I just listed it. It's going to be for sale. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be sold soon. Link in the bio. <laughs> yeah, if you're interested. And uh, yeah, man, I can relate so heavy to that. And it's just like that transition out. I feel like it's a very valid excuse for maybe a lot of people. And it's like the thought of like, did you save up enough money? Like, were you worried that like at 25, did you come home to your parents? Like, did you stay at your parents' house or did you save up enough money? And were you smart enough to like be able to buy your own place? Like, what did that look like? Were you yeah. set financially uh, to? I left, I left, I left hockey with $0 in my bank account. Holy <laughs> shit. Zero dollars. Professional wow. hockey was zero dollars. I didn't make I didn't make a fucking dime off of hockey. Jesus. Um, yeah, and like I think that's when people are like professional hockey player, glamorous life, making good money. Like, bro, it was it could not have been farther from the fucking truth. Yeah, could not have been farther from the truth for me. Um, in the whole time that I legitimately, when I left hockey, I left hockey with zero dollars. I maybe had I'm, I maybe had like a thousand, but to answer your question, I went home. I moved in with moved back in with my family. I was dating my my girlfriend that I'm still dating now. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was like, do you, she was like about to be moving out of her apartment in Los Angeles. And so I was like, all right, why don't we get a place together? And I knew that um, I could start. I was working with a little bit of brands on Instagram, so I was doing like the one off like protein powder and, da, 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 yeah. and I knew if I worked, I knew if I did enough of those to just pay for fucking rent and food. Yeah. Like I needed like two or 3000 bucks a month to like be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I did for the first like couple of years. I was like, I'm just going to work with enough brands to where I make money to pay for my rent and my living. And then outside of that, I'm just going to try and build these platforms. Yeah. Like I start to like really actually turn it into something. And I got, wait, I got two quick questions there before I forget them because how long did it take you to build up that following? Like, cause obviously yeah. it wasn't an overnight thing. It took very long time. So how long did it take to get that first sponsorship? But then like, do you think putting yourself in that scenario of like having to kind of like fend for yourself a bit helped you like exponentially grow after that? Um, so to answer the second question, I don't feel like I'm somebody that like thrives when it's like, I, I can do like the backs against the wall, got to perform kind of thing. But I don't feel like I'm somebody that thrives from that. I actually feel like I'm somebody that thrives much more with like a security blanket. Mm -hmm. And so like, for me, that was definitely my girlfriend. Like my girlfriend was happy to help with like, if I couldn't fucking pay for rent for a month, like, and I had a conversation with her and she was like, okay, I'm fine with that. That actually helped me a lot more than me being like, I got to get out there and fucking work a job no matter what, like that, that's just not the way that I roll. That's awesome though. Um, So put your pride aside. I feel like I feel like it did pump me, it did motivate me um, when I got done with hockey to want to do something more because I had such a fucking still do have such a fucking chip on my shoulder with hockey with not getting to where I wanted to be in hockey. Um, but I feel like moving to LA and moving in with her and like uh, doing the LA thing was actually like a very like safe and like chill move it was actually like okay i got time to figure this out okay i got time to like work through this shit and like build this brand definitely i mean and having like a great support system like be your be your girlfriend or like your your family or anything like it's such a huge thing that we try to talk about and one of the biggest reasons like we have this podcast is just to like be able to help people so it's great to see you like cj mentioned just kind of like put the stigma of like your pride aside and be able to like find help in someone and like rather than having to be that macho like oh I'm gonna do it I have to do it like you don't and a lot of people like think they have to do things I feel like when in reality their perception of the situation is just so far off from the from what's really going on and taking that step back and like kudos to you for uh, being able to like communicate that and kind of like fix something that even that never even happened and just keep to turn out where you are now, I'm sure it's just like a cool feeling to look back on yourself. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I feel like, um, 
I feel like towards the end of my career, I started getting a lot more into, I, I'm, I've always been into self-development. Yeah. Like I've always just been like, I want to be, I want to better myself. I want to like, I think that that comes from my mom being a personal trainer, wanting to do that. And my dad being like super creative with his business and all of that shit. Definitely. But I've had it in me to just like want to better myself personally. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like towards the end of my career, what I started to notice was the relationships that I had in hockey, both with the sport, with the teams and with the players, a lot of the players on my team outside of like my inner circle of guys um, wasn't, wasn't what I wanted in yeah. relationship. Yep. Like it was very like transactional. It was very like the coaches like me, if I'm playing good, the teams don't care about you unless you're like in their good books. Yep. The players Just a on the team, especially bro, when you get to those lower leagues, like everybody is fending for themselves yeah. and they don't, and nobody has that security of an AHL and an NHL. You have, you know, three year deal, four year deal. So like you're much more chill in mm -hmm. the East coast. Every deal is day to day. So like, there's a lot less of the camaraderie of like it being a family. Oh. And I felt like that was something that I was really missing. Yeah. And so I was, and so when I started to get later into my career, uh, especially when I started going to Russia, especially when I went to Russia, uh, subconsciously, I think like that was really what my body was craving. Was, yeah. Like, I want healthy relationships and like, and like communication and like, some people around me that like care about what I care about and like are good people and like are trying to be better themselves. And, uh, and then when I met my girlfriend, it just like really aligned for me. It was like, this mm -hmm. is what I've actually been fucking looking for. Yeah. And like her, the communication with her and like working through shit with her and like got, starting to build my, my second career alongside of her has like really shaped, uh, the way that I, view all relationships now yeah and i'm like this is how i actually want my relationships like the hockey stuff was cool it was great uh, a lot of the people that i was on teams with were actually amazing dudes that i still love to this day but my relationship with the sport my relationship with the teams like a lot of it was un unfucking healthy yeah yep. um and so now seeing that with my girlfriend i'm like this is what a healthy relationship looks like and like that's just what I want now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I, I honestly could, I love hearing like the stuff you say, like I couldn't relate more like with my own personal relationship and like communicating that way. And like my transition through the sport and just like having to not re-identify myself, but just like figure out what I have to do and like being able to like, I feel like hockey and all sports and all like that egotistical, like be, you got to be like that macho male. Like yeah. I, I felt myself always being artistic and kind of following the same path that you kind of shared and it was very hard in that hockey world to be like not the the fighter like kind of like go like hard kind of guy like and you're like you can't be that and this dual personality so that transition totally. is like for mental health like it's just great to hear like other people talk about it again but getting out of like hockey and speaking on like not that it was your lower lows like but battling through adversities and stuff i feel like a good segue of like the hardest times coming out as the best is you were actually one of the first person that showed me this, but the cold showers and the ice baths, like how, how uh, beneficial have those been for you of like, and I guess like, why do you take them? I guess would be like my first question. Yeah. Um, great. It's a great question. Um, I've recognized that like, if you can, if you can handle stress in your body, mm -hmm. You're just able to perform at just a much higher level. And so like with all of the training that I do, everything, working out, sauna, ice bath, meditation, r like running, like literally anything, it's, it is partially to look good and feel good, but it's also to teach myself how to handle a different amounts of stress mm -hmm. and like how to, st how to stay calm through it, how to like still stay present through it, how to like still feel through it. Because typically what happens is like, if your body can't, if your body feels things that it doesn't want to be feeling or it does or feels like it can't feel, you end up going into your head and just overthinking it, overthinking mm -hmm. and trying to work through it mentally and trying to like piece things together. And if you can, if you can train yourself to feel different amounts of stress and emotions and different shit in your body, you're just able to like stay present and just like work through shit and stay calm and like still perform. And so, um, 
the sauna and ice bath was something that I think I got into. I mean, like ice bath hot, like with yeah, hockey, I always loved ice bath when I was yeah, when I was they're playing. amazing. Um, sauna and ice together. One of my friends here introduced me to Gabby and Laird Hamilton, who run a company called XPT. Mm-hmm. Like a, 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 Laird is a, so, a pro surfer, and uh, they they started a company called XPT where they basically like mix workouts with ice baths and saunas oh god um and so like i went and trained with them for a bit and saw their uh mentality and like the way that they look at things and like it really just introduced me to like if your body can adapt to stress well like your lifespan is so much longer your vitality is better the way you perform is better and i think a lot of players don't even recognize that they're spending a lot of their life in fight or flight you just get get used to it yeah don't even fucking realize it and so especially in like high energy, high intensity environments like a hockey rink or a hockey team, you don't even understand that you're actually living your life on almost like an autopilot of like trying not to feel certain feelings or deal with certain levels of stress. Mm-hmm. And so you're just in this like fight or flight feeling that you that most guys don't even recognize. And so like doing all of these all of this training for me has really been like teaching my body and teaching me like how to chill out, how to calm and how to like work through stressful situations and like keep moving when things are not the exact way that I want them to be. Yeah, dude, definitely. Like you hit that so well. And like the the big reason I like touching on it is like I've been taking um, and preaching the cold showers and the, the ice baths to people since we yeah. started this podcast. And like, I take them every single morning. I've been on like, I don't like to call it a morning routine, but like my morning flow, 6 a.m. Like I start my day off with a ice cold water and a cold shower. And um, it, it, you've kind of hit every point there. Like I don't do it for like the skin or for the hair. Like I do it because when I wake up in the morning, like I don't want to fucking do it. Like I want to take a warm shower, but I get in there and I just feel that cold. And it's just like perception is your reality. And like, However you want to sit there, if you want to think that it life sucks, like then life sucks. But if you want to see what's good in the situation, like you can feel like a whole lot of like real good stuff out of that. Yeah. But into that same thing, I would love to know because I've been doing the cold showers. I I know you have the ice box as your ice bath. Is that working for you? Because I've been on like offer up and Craigslist trying to purchase one. Yeah, dude. So mine is literally just a freezer. Yeah. Uh, like a meat, like a chest freezer that you would usually put like meat or like frozen foods in that I just, you just line the, the sides with uh, like silicone so that no water leaks. And then you can literally just like plug it in, wait for it to get cold, unplug it, and then like leave it unplugged and go in it. And then like, once it gets warm again, then you just plug it back in. So that's what I do. I feel like ice bath is a step up from ice, from cold shower. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah, because you're submerged in it. Uh, almost the the shower being consistently moving um, almost changes it a little bit than when you're just like sitting and you're still in yeah. the ice bath. Yeah, how, the <laughs> ice bath is way more reason. intense. Like if you don't if you don't have an ice bath, like this shower is an amazing thing to do. Like it still is super beneficial. Yeah, but I've had like really, really, I've really felt benefits of the ice bath, um, and bro like if you go and look up like the nervous your nervous system yep which is fight or flight yeah um if you look up like your nervous system and like how just how to like heal it how to work with it how to like strengthen it bro it's crazy how many people are living with their nervous system upside down and they don't even know it Mm -hmm. and uh you're just unable to be calm unable to be present unable to be be chill unable to feel you um so all that stuff that i do is to do that that's yeah, awesome. man, it's a uh, that's amazing. So I want to kind of bring it back a little bit, and I want to talk about that, uh, like more about that transition from out of hockey into what you're currently doing. And when you were searching for that thing, how did you like? How did you know? Because, like you said, you did a lot of different things to find that passion of yours. When you finally did, how did you know that was it? Like, how did you? Re- yeah. Go ahead. Um, I didn't know so oh. <laughs> when I first started doing the workouts and doing the training videos, I actually knew that it was something I didn't want to do forever. A lot of people hit me up. Yo, you should be a trainer. You should start your own training platform. You should become the like Pavel Barber, yeah. but more fitness, <laughs> more training, yeah. less just stick handling, but like something like that. 
And I was like, I could do that. I feel confident in my ability to, if I really wanted to go hard into that, to build that out. But it wasn't my passion. And when we started a, we started a health and wellness company called Reset, yeah. me and my girlfriend did, which was uh, essentially just like a party, but all health and wellness, no alcohol, no recovery. We're big fans of it, Theragun, man. <laughs> yeah. massages. Thank you. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, so when we started that, when we started that, and we hired an assistant and we hired a videographer and I had a team. The moment that I had a team to execute on different ideas, I, it's something clicked for me that I was like, this is my fucking life. This mm -hmm. is what I want to do. I want to have a team. I want to have, I, I've always said that like, I actually feel like my highest purpose, like my biggest goal in life is to be a dad. And like <laughs> that fatherly kind of thing of like being a fucking head of a team and like teaching and like, helping people on a team and like ha building out a fucking badass group of people that can do really cool things in culture uh was j just like really connected with me really yeah. connected with me so so reset was the first thing that like really hit me and then once we started doing reset that was like all right this is like i'm gonna do this while doing my personal thing but like having a team is like my thing yeah, yeah. and you know what it's it's a little more businessy side i guess but like you own, you have, you have a lot of things going on. Yeah, you have a lot of different companies, <laughs> a lot of different. I'm sure you're working with a lot of different people. How do you put yourself in that position and like kind of keep like? Because I own my own business as well, but I've always had a hard time like separating myself from like the employees, like trying to like keep myself to where like like yes, I don't want to be like a tyrant, but like be the boss. Like, how do you do that with so many different people with so many that's different? My that's probably my worst. That's probably my worst trait. Okay. <laughs> my worst trait. Like too nice. One thing that I say to everybody that I'm hiring now is, my biggest flaw is that I'm too easygoing. I'm too I, too. I care too much about you having fun. I care too much about you enjoying your work that I don't push you hard enough. And I've been taken advantage of. I've hired people that literally just end up being friends, and we just fucking hang. <laughs> yeah. We don't get anything done. And then I feel bad because I'm like, I allowed this yeah. because I want you to have so much fun. Yeah. So now I'm like really trying to work on if I hire you, like we got to really keep that line between us enjoying our time, but also like really getting stuff done. Yeah. And like communicate communication. Like I really try to like, I try to say that in the first conversation with them. Hey, here's something that I'm my biggest flaw as a boss is that I'm, I am too easy going on people. I want you to, I care too much about your well being, your enjoyment, you having fun that I don't push you hard enough. And so, like, please don't take advantage of that. And, like, please don't take me for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and just, like, do, like, fucking work hard. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Have you found that balance yet, though? Have you been able to find that balance so far? I'm starting to, yeah. yeah. I'm starting to. I definitely am, like, I definitely continually try to communicate if I feel like we're messing around too much. Do I feel like I'm not getting enough out of them? Like, I'll say, like, hey, like I, we've been having a lot of fun. Like, let's really turn it up. Like let's, let's fucking get to work. we got a lot of shit to do. Um, and uh, uh, bro, every, you'd be surprised at how many things are solved. If you just communicate, it's really, really yeah, wild. Man. like the notion that like things can just be like disastrous problems within a business, within a relationship, within an environment can just be solved. If you're willing to just have conversations and like speak your, how you're feeling and like what you're, what you're going through or what you're feeling towards the situation. And so I just like try to have a lot of conversation. I try to be really open with my employees. If I'm like, Hey, like, I feel like you haven't been really caring the last couple of weeks. Like let's dial it in a little bit. Um, and I want them to be open with me too. If they're like, Hey, you're being really hard on me. Like I'm not enjoying this right now. Cause I want to know that stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think like you say, communication is huge. And like a lot of times in your everyday, like at least personally, I'll find myself like, almost thinking that like people can understand my thoughts like that like in a way that like if you'd said something to me and like i would expect you to rea react a certain way but like how how would you really know how i would expect you to react so it's just like and then people will get mad at that situation so just communicating like you're saying in in business relationships and everything is like is really so key mm -hmm. that's honestly why that's honestly why i feel like my relationship with my girlfriend has been and so beneficial beneficial for me in business because like you know with somebody that you love that you're in a relationship with that you want to be in a relationship with like if something makes you if she says something or i say something that like makes her feel 
a certain way or if she's not feeling good about something like you're gonna have to learn to communicate that like mm -hmm. you have to say like hey that didn't make me feel good or that made me feel like whatever you don't care about me or whatever it is and you have to learn to say that and like learning to say that is uncomfortable as fuck you're like Death. i've never had to say this <laughs> yeah. before i've never had to like speak my mind on this and tell them like hey when you said that the other day like it made me feel this way about me or about the situation and like i just wanted to bring that up and like let you know how i'm feeling that communication is like such a skill in itself mm -hmm. and is and most people don't do it because it's uncomfortable when you start yeah. doing it the more you start doing it the more you start feeling like oh this is like a strength oh this is like yeah this is something that's super valuable and is super good and super beneficial and you want to start doing it more and you build momentum with it um and so yeah like the relationship with my girlfriend has really helped in a business sense because i love all the people that are working for me and i care about them as if they are family members and so i'm like fuck I just want to let you know, I saw that you didn't work. Like I saw that you literally didn't do anything when you were in the office the other day. And like, you were just chilling, like what's going on? Like, are you feeling like you don't want to work? Are you feeling like you're burnt, burned out a little bit? Are you, am I pushing you too hard? Like that kind of conversation is something that you have to have, uh, because it just like, it really is like almost the, it's almost like the oil between the gears, oil or whatever. Grease. It's like the between the gears, it just like keeps everything like fucking going. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's like, yeah. like being a leader and not just like a boss. Like you're actually in there, like showing them what to do and like you're caring about them, like emotionally as a person. Like I think you spoke on it in another, on your, some social media platform, but about how like it doesn't matter like who anyone is, how like famous, like athletes, like any like regular person, like, when you get past like that wall or that like persona of like who their title is, like at the end of the day, like we're all just like souls with like emotion. So like connecting on that level really shows a lot to someone and like in instills that like trust and like that drive for them to probably want to work harder for you. And that way you don't need to like be up someone's ass and like bitching at them to do stuff. Like they actually want to do a job because you're cool and you're a great guy to like work with and like they respect that. Yep. You know, I feel like uh, in the past, it's almost been like the leader or the coach or the boss was like a step above looking down at all the employees. And I feel like now I feel like people just really want to be related to yep. and like conversed with. And so I feel like a lot of the best leaders and coaches and and bosses will will like just talk to people as if they're on the same fucking level. Yeah, like, yeah I still own the business and I'm still the boss and like, at the end of the day, if there's a decision that needs to be made, it is on me. Mm -hmm. It's not up to them. But like, I'm not gonna come into the office and like treat you like you're no nothing to me. Like, you're still why would they even want to work for you then? A hundred percent. And that was something that I feel like in my on my hockey teams, a lot of the teams that I was on, it was very transactional. It was like, if the team was playing good, the coach was happy with everybody. Yep. If the team was playing bad, the coach hated everybody. Oh yeah. If the team was if players were like not showing up to games, like they would get the coach would be like really pissed. Yeah, hey, get your ass in the line. Other than and I, yeah, and I just feel like uh I feel like if I was a coach, like I feel there is I definitely feel like there is a time and a place to be like stern and be like serious with them. Like I think that that's needed. But I also think like you can just get a lot more out of people if you talk to them like regular people and have conversations with them and genuinely care about them. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's the kind of the way that I try to go about all of my businesses. Yeah, and so Reset was the first one out of, so I know you have Honey House and you have Triple Deke mm -hmm. and then you have uh, Reset. So like Reset came first yes. and what came second for you? Was it Triple Deke? So Reset came first. And then, and we did that for about two years. We were planning on doing our second, our third festival, but COVID happened. So we had to pause that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. COVID happened. I started Triple Deek like two months later while I was in quarantine. So Triple Deek started right after that last May. And then in July, we, me and my buddy decided to do Honey House together. So that started in July. Which and that was a genius idea. That, yeah, and now from Honey House, now what I'm doing, 99% of my time now is actually, I started an agency where I just advise brands on TikTok. And Holy cow, TikTok, wow. TikTok, brands and, and creators on TikTok. Yeah. And so that's 90% of my time now is literally just sitting with either brands or creators or individuals that work at brands um, and teaching them like, yo, here's how you film stuff on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I started my own channel 
that's like all business and education content. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I'm going really hard into right now. And how did you not like, so when you were going through all this and like building all these different platforms, how did you stay so organized, man? You have yeah. so much going on. Like, how do you stay so focused and like moving all these different entities pretty much at the same time? It kind of like everything kind of overlaps. Well oiled that. machine. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it is a lot of it actually, um, doesn't overlap as much as you would think because a lot of it isn't like a full-time thing. So like triple D is like, I can work on triple D. I have interns that help me with triple D. So I'm not doing the like actual day-to-day -day posting. Mm -hmm. If I, if I spend a day on triple D strategizing, coming up with content, coming up with new ideas, and then I hand that off to my team, I don't need to do anything else the entire week. Mm -hmm. So like triple D is like a day of my week. Um, and even less than that right now, because we're, I'm not prioritizing that as much because I'm going harder into my agency. Um, honey house was very much like, a we're going in the house for 30 days. We're filming a bunch for those 30 days and then we're getting out of it. So there's like a two week span before those 30 days and after it, that's like the ramping up of it. And then like the closing out of it. But outside of that, it's not like a consistent, like I'm working on it every day. We're not posting any content. We're not in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like a very like quick time period thing. Yeah. And then, um, and then reset is just like completely on pause. So reset, we're not doing anything with at all. So like really what is consistent throughout all of those is me creating my own content. And then now me creating the, doing stuff with brands on TikTok, the agency stuff. Those are really the only two things that I have every single day that I'm doing. So like I have like, you know, my morning up until like 2 PM is like all of that stuff. And then after 2 PM, it's like, I can do what I want. If I need to do triple D stuff, I can do it. If I need to do honey house stuff, I can do it. Like it's less, it's less, uh, full time than people think. Um, and it's more just comes down to me just being smart with like my scheduling. Yeah. And, go ahead. I was gonna say to that and like to your scheduling and to your, like your mornings, like do you find yourself going through like the same kind of schedule in the morning? Do you have, I know you do the morning walks. I know. Every day. Okay. And is it the same? Like the reason I ask is because like, I feel like a lot of people have like a morning routine and they get caught up in like the routine of things and it's like mindless. And whereas I try to say like have a morning flow and kind of like, I have a whole book of different like things that I do. Uh, a lot actually came from you and uh, I've been doing them for like probably almost a year now every morning. And it's just like, Sometimes they differ in the, the time I do them, not time, like the order, but it's always a consistent like flow of how I set my day off. And it's just like really, really changed my life seriously. And I was just kind of wondering if that's how you balance it as well. So yeah, bro, like this is where me being a boss, a business person, boss, entrepreneur, and like making my own choices is like this is part of it that I love. I legitimately don't do anything at all with anybody outside of myself until 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wow. reaches me. Nobody calls me. I don't have meetings. I don't do, I don't go and work with anybody. I don't like, even with like Sam, until 10 o'clock, Sam, I'll like see in the morning and stuff okay. like that, but I won't do any business stuff before some days it's uh, some days nine, but at most days it's 10 o'clock. My entire, I wake up at six, my yep. entire 6 a.m. till like 9, 10 a.m. is just me doing my own shit. Oh, I work yeah. out, I walk, I meditate, I hang, I like go through like, I have coffee, I like hang with Sam, I like. But you're shooting go, videos like, through like, that too, sauna. right? Like for your Instagram, like you're shooting videos for your Instagram. Yeah. Does that, do you, do you find that that interrupts yeah. the flow at all or no? So a majority of it, I actually film on my camera roll, have my phone on airplane mode and then post it later. That's why a lot of the times if you see, if you're like really paying attention. Yeah, it's a recap, morning recap. And it posts at fucking nine. Yeah. yeah. And people see it at 10 o'clock and it shows, and it might even show in the video like 6 a.m. It's cause I'm not turning my phone on or going on Instagram until nine. And I'm filming that shit on my camera roll and then just like posting it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I saw you say something about that because like I post like I run our Instagram page for like a lot of the morning stuff. And I was running into the problem where like I had this beautiful morning flow that like my life was in, like you said the same way, like just myself, no one to do meditating, everything. But every time I did something, I had to record it. So like I would like jump on my phone and start like vlogging in a sense. And it totally threw me out. And you had spoke on on your Instagram. So I started doing the same thing and just saving it. And if for our viewers, all the morning recaps, that, that was coming from you. So that really, thank you. <laughs> that really helped me kind of like awesome. 
be able to like still do what I have to do and be my in my own mood, but like be able to kind of share the content, which is I have found like kind of hard to balance, like live this, like we not preach, but like kind of say like live that lifestyle for yourself. Like don't get caught up on social media, just like mindlessly scrolling. But at the same time, like I want to share that knowledge with people. So like, have you find that struggle? Like besides the mornings, like throughout your day, like preaching one thing, but still having to post like your whole day online. I would say that like, I don't post when I don't want to. Mm -hmm. And I also like, I don't fake shit mm -hmm. on my Instagram. So like, I won't post just to post. Definitely. Um, I'll post if I'm feeling it. I'll post if I feel like I want to talk about something. I'll post if I feel like it's something that I, uh, ne <clears throat> need to be doing that day. Instagram is like, if we're getting like really technical, I'm Please, like yeah. two feet out the door from Instagram already. So I'm not even caring. Oh, really? I feel like I've really noticed that slowly going towards TikTok. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm like, I'm like spending 80% of my time on TikTok. So like Instagram, I'm doing stories to like, keep up with my audience, like my audience, keep up with me. Yeah. I'll post photos, like, you know, every so often, but it's just not a platform that I think is I, like, I think it's just like slowly phasing out. I think it's phasing into more of a friends and family thing mm -hmm. that some people will still get their get reach and build audience like Sam crushes it on Instagram. Um, other people will start to use it more for like friends and family, similar to how Facebook has been used to for our parents. Yeah, so that's going to be how I feel for Instagram with us. Like, I think we'll always use Instagram because we grew up with it. It was like our platform. Definitely. But I think it'll just turn into more of like, this is how you keep up with your friends. This is how you see like what so-and-so is up to. They got married. They had a baby. They're <laughs> yeah. It's the MySpace so now. Um, I I try to like really find like what's, what is cool right now? Like what is trend? What is like popular? Where are people like hanging out and like spending their time? And that's where I try to go. And it's just like so evident that that's TikTok mm -hmm. for me that I'm like, I want to spend all of my time going on TikTok because eventually it will shift and it'll be become the thing and then everybody will be there and it'll be harder to like build on there and so I want to just build on there as quick as I can right now before that happens. Definitely. Do you get caught up in the views at all? Because I when I I started TikTok last last year before COVID and I posted it was like the the app to be on because it, everything you put on just blew <laughs> up and I posted one video that did pretty well and then I made a roller coaster in my backyard. All right, I'm ready. Here we go, mom's doing it. <laughs> and it, it got like, in total, got like six million views like out of like every video I made. And then like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I gotta keep doing this. I gotta keep like leveling up and like keeping up. Like how do you not let, let yourself get in, get to where I got? <laughs> I, I think you have to, I mean, first of all, that's dope. That's a really cool idea. And that's something that I could totally see working on. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like you have to, um, you have to just have a conversation with yourself and be like, look, if this is what I end up chasing is these views, mm -hmm. um, my content is going to be skewed and it's going to not necessarily represent like what I want to talk about or what I'm going to try and do. And so like asking yourself, like, what's my like real goal. And if like for you, if it's like my real goal is to have a roller coaster page and that's like long term. It's like, cool, how do I get to there that I can do this consistently and like for a long period of time and like chasing views on any platform is not a long-term uh, plan. Mm -hmm, definitely. And chasing views on any platform is a very short-term thing. It's like, oh, today, how can I get a view? Today, how can I get a million views? Uh, and that's just very short-term. Um, so what I try to think about is like, what do I wanna be known, known for? What do I want my page to be known for? What do I want to talk about consistently? And then like, how can I just continually try to make those videos a little bit better? Because the, what you really want is not to be like one video pops off and then the next videos don't. And then one video pops off and it's inconsistent. Yeah. One video with 80,000, then 300, then 200, then a hundred thousand. What you really want is all of the baseline to rise at the same time. So you really want like all of those 300 view videos to start getting 500 and then all of them to start getting 2000. And like, once you build that all up, then that's when you're in a really good spot. If your video is yep. getting consistently getting views. So that, the way that I try to just think about it is like, how can I do this consistently and like, just make better videos every time. 
so that people want to follow me and they're and they're just getting a little bit more views yeah a little bit more consistently um and, and that's the kind of the way i go about it definitely and when you say like better videos like each time for you personally like you're not meaning like better camera quality better sound like are you just meaning better content right like doing more of yourself yeah. i mean better i mean i mean listening to the audience mm -hmm. i mean looking at data like looking at feedback from the video like okay this video got a hundred thousand and this video got two hundred thousand and they're very similar but this video only got five thousand what is what is going on in these two videos versus this other one and what can we what information can we take from that and just like add to this next one that we're gonna do mm -hmm. so like improvising um iterating on the content just like trying to take whatever data you have if that's just like visually looking at it and guessing what people you thought people liked if that's looking through comments and seeing what people talked about and then just like applying that to the next video that's how you just make them a little bit better every time mm -hmm. definitely i feel like besides your tiktok having a hundreds of different tips and tricks to be able to like maximize your maximize your growth uh, personally i've experienced like dming you you always like respond with like a video response what i which i think which is we like, took from you yeah which is like amazing <laughs> and like i feel like you have all these like tips like you always say like to when you're speaking into like the the camera like don't act like you're talking to an audience like just talk to like your your one friend or like you know like something personal but besides those and those are all amazing is there something that like you feel is like one kind of like standout thing that like if anyone's trying to like excel on this platform or any platform should try to do and capitalize on um, it's really hard with all the different types of content people want to post. I would say the main thing would probably be like, understand what your, what the reason is that you're doing it for and what you want. And then the next thing would be like a series, like consistent pieces of content that are very similar mm -hmm. rather than just trying to do trends rather than just trying to do one-off videos that are viral, like do something consistently for a long period of time and just try to make it like a little bit better. Um, that'd be like the tip that I would give to anybody that's just starting out. But that, if you're talking into the camera, that tip of like, talk to one single person, like blew me away. Yeah. Like I legitimately was just starting talking into the camera. Like, I mean, I've been talking into my Instagram stories and stuff, but even in my Instagram stories, I had never thought about it as talking to one single person. Yeah. And like, when I saw that video that that girl put, uh, posted and she said that I, she was like, stand up in your videos and talk as if you're talking to one single person, not to a whole audience. I literally was like, damn, that just shifted. So yeah. Much me. Like that just like changed my whole yeah. way that I filmed this fucking video. No, uh, definitely. And so, yeah, that, that was one that like really helped me. And then let me ask you this when, cause we talked about the consistency and trying to make a, a, vid a better video every time. Do you feel like you should try to get wrapped up into that? But like, like, how do you find like a good balance of not trying to outdo yourself and burn yourself out like how I did? Like, how do you kind of balance? Like, do you yeah. think they should just stay consistent and do whatever, like just any idea and just keep putting it out there just to kind of get into the rhythm? The videos on TikTok, I'm um, speaking of TikTok specifically, yeah. and even reels now, um, they just need to be good enough. So like, if you look at the video and you're like, this is good enough post it yeah because like it's a tiktok tiktok is such an output thing uh that it's like the difference between a video being um a martin scorsese movie and being like just like some half-assed like tiktok um is not that far are in it, it for the algorithm like the algorithm is not picking up masterpiece videos and oh shit uh there we go Oh, sorry, JT. You're cutting out for a second. Hold on. Ah, adversity. I'm yeah. gonna try and go video off. Yeah, go for that. You want to try talking? Yeah. Yo. There Hello. we go. Hey. Yo. Yo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yo. It's yeah. <laughs> you're good. So we're trying. I, I think that. that's working. All right. So, so sorry. Wh wh where did you finish off? We kind of missed what you were saying before. <laughs> TikTok videos just need to be good enough. Yeah. yeah. I do have you, definitely a, a, you know, at least a couple more, one or two yeah. more questions just while we still have you here. And it, 
we'll just battle through the adversity. We're we're firm believers that everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't mind, we'll we'll just ask a couple more. Um, just point all the cameras at us. <laughs> of course. But basically, I mean, I just, I have one kind of like big question that I ask everyone, and kind of like piggybacking off of like not quote unquote like posting videos for the views, but like getting after like doing what you need to do kind of let me just ask the question basically is like what i ask everyone is like how do you define success like personally like is it materialistic is yeah. it how would you define that my answer to success would be being able to do what i want to do and being happy every day of my life definitely that's a uh that's a great answer. And like finding that happiness, like, do you, does it come in waves? Is it like, are you happy every day in your life right now? Like it seems from the outside that you would be, but I'm sure there's, there is waves through that. That's a great question. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Um, I, so like on a, on a grand scheme of things, if I'm overall happy, yeah, there is days where shit fucking blows yeah like mm -hmm. there's days where i'm sad there's days where i'm pissed off there's days where there, there's mo moments where i'm super frustrated or unhappy or whatever um but if i like sit with myself and like ask myself like yo to the core how do we feel myself feeling yeah, we're good. Like we're fucking, this is great. This is all, this is like grand scheme with things happy. That's what I mean. Definitely. I mean, that's like the like great way to look at it. Like our feedback still coming in a little out, but getting the whole gist of it. And it's just like, it's that balance and that, that yin and yang, like life in itself, like isn't going to be perfect every second because if it was like, then there would be no like perfect or happiness. Like you have to have that like low moment to define like those high moments. And I feel like through your story, you can kind of like, at least hearing it, it seems like a lot of those lower end times you were talking about, like those biggest adversities you were going through, like in a way transitioned you and segue you in, into like the biggest like highs in your life. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people that's kind of like that, just like, not like a roller coaster in a bad way, but like life is gonna have its up and downs. And like, just like we talk about taking those cold showers um, or doing those, uncomfortable things to become comfortable with that uncomfortable feeling it's just like you have to look at the bigger picture like you said in life and really use that saying like perception is your reality and like that energy that you manifest and you put out into that situation is so so real on how you go through your day yeah and i i'm a big believer in um looking back at your past and re really trying to find um not even silver lines I, i'm a big believer in looking back at your past and like what you benefited from from the hard experiences from the challenges from the really low lows like because like you just said yin and yang there is good and bad and everything there is a takeaway and a loss and everything and i think for everything like that's something that i work on a ton with uh, personal development coaches and therapy of like, okay, how can I look back at like situations in my past and be like, this was a fucking positive. Like yeah. this helped me. Yeah. Like even though in the moment that shit sucked, like even though in the moment, like that was not good, like this actually really helped me. And like when you, if you can go through that process and get to that place, like you just start to recognize that all of the adversity actually really did help you. Um, but it's a way of looking at it. Like it's a perspective that you have to shift, kind of shift into or try to work on uh, to see it from a different perspective. Because like, you know, nobody wants to go through anything tough. And like, when you do go through tough shit, you're like, this is the worst. Like this is nothing good can come from this, but that's not the truth. There yeah. is good that comes from this. You just got to really, really look for it. But if you start looking for it, you start going through shit and you start going like, oh, I wonder what good stuff's coming from this. I wonder what this is doing for me that's beneficial. Um, and it just starts, again, you just start to build momentum. It's that optimism. Exactly, I love yeah. It. I love Back it. to the optimistic. <laughs> and then I got a big question for you. This is my like number one question. If Honestly, you maybe can even answer this because I know you said that you feel like your purpose in life is to be like a dad. So maybe even <laughs> something like looking at your son or your daughter in a way, 
what would you like? What would be the number one piece of advice that you can leave with them to go and follow their dreams? Um, to listen to themselves, like to really, really get to a place with themselves where they are self sufficient and don't need me or anybody else to tell them what they should do. Like, I think with my kids, like, I want to be super involved. I want to be like, you know, I want to be the best dad. I want to like have them be like, listen to anything that I say, but at the same time, I want them to be fucking happy and I want them to listen to themselves and choose what they want to do. And so like the same way that I wish that that's something that probably was instilled in me a little bit more of like, just do you and listen to you and don't worry about anybody else. Um, what anybody else says. Um, I think that that's something that I really would like to instill in my kids as challenging as that probably is as a parent, because you want them to follow you in your footsteps. Um, I want my kids to fucking be the best versions of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I would tell them. Yeah. I mean, and that can go for everybody too. Yeah, I was going to say. It's just like you said, like you following yourself and everything that you were saying within your mind about the hockey and going to content creation and trying all these different things. I mean, look where it's brought you today following that whatever that is like i mean it's so like what is it like your heart or like just like there's something in your body that drive. just that knows where you need to be and if you just let that thing drive drive yourself i mean it will find its way that's what i feel like at least 100%, definitely 100 percent. and although not not to i don't know if it'll come off weird but like <laughs> not that you don't you have kids but like you are inspiring like myself and a yeah. lot of other people to like you're instilling those those core principles you're trying to like one day give to your kids like personally speaking like you i feel like you've passed those along to me over the last couple of years of following you and even in the conversation tonight it's just like it, it's very enjoyable to be able to talk to you and just Seriously. get a lot of knowledge and hear some more just cool stories about how you've uh, you've come up and switched through like that that not macho but like that hockey lifestyle into like this more you know like progressive like just every day like what people are doing in this generation like getting online and like being themselves and like just getting noticed for being themselves it's very uh in a sense rare to see but it's it's amazing to see yeah thank you guys i really i really genuinely appreciate that and uh and feel so similar to you guys so it is um my pleasure to be able to to jump on this and and chat with you guys and give you any sort of value that i can thank you man it's yeah, been an absolute seriously. honor are you at jt barnett about uh, uh, uh all platforms Yes, at JT Barnett, and uh, would love like any of the listeners that listen to this to send me a message and say what up because I would love to connect with you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you guys heard it. Go make sure to reach out to Please him. Everything will be him. in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe wherever you're viewing and listening. And we got we will see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.